Well, tomorrow is a very special day for me. Uh, right after the 9.45 Mass, I have a privilege of uh, baptizing my grandnephew right here in the cathedral. And my family will be here and we'll have a little reunion. And I think some of them will be coming to the 9.45 Mass. And so, you know, I'm, all, I'm almost getting butterflies already. A little nervous when my own family comes. And um, so I said this little prayer. I said, Our Lady, our dear Lady dressed in green, help me to preach like Bishop Sheen. Well, this is um, very serious uh, theology and scripture reading. This is the second in um, a series of six gospels on the gospel or the bread of life from St. John's gospel, the most important teaching of the Eucharist in the entire New Testament. And in the first segment of the bread of life discourse, Jesus identifies the new bread from heaven as his life-giving teaching, his life-giving teaching. You know, we don't think about that. We don't think about bread. How can that be uh, teaching? What does that mean? Well, God's revelation of himself is found par excellence in the person of Jesus Christ. Remember that one uh, scene after Jesus multiplied the loaves and fishes Philip said to Jesus, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And he said, Philip, he who sees me sees the Father. Jesus is God incarnate, the human face of God. And that is why the words that Jesus has spoken to us are spirit and life. Because these sacred words and deeds put believers in touch with the spirit and therefore, even life at its very source, uh, God himself, the Alpha and the Omega. This life-giving bread for our nourishment, inspiration, direction, and correction is the word of God found in the scriptures, and it includes the church's traditions, the church's teaching, and the precepts of the church. That's all considered God's revelation, God speaking uh, to us. Again, I think it's um, St. Peter, his uh, first uh, letter. In the seminary, we learn the definition of scripture. He says, all scripture is given to us by God, useful for teaching, for inspiration, for correction, for, and so on. It's all God's revelation. Jesus clearly states that this new and better nourishment comes from belief in him. What is asked is a total commitment to him in whom we believe. This faith must be manifested by concrete acts. St. James says, faith without good works is dead. To decide what to do and what not to do, we must look at the Lord and imitate him all the time and begin to love and serve and care for others. It means to follow the unselfish path of Jesus, which leads to true and everlasting life. And it's a difficult teaching because it cuts through all our natural tendencies. Later on in the Bread of Life discourse will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. It said when Je they heard Jesus' talk, many went away. They said, oh, this is too hard for us to endure. Many people chose to leave Jesus and go and live by their own set of principles because it's a very difficult pre uh, teaching. Let's face it, Western society especially, is so much into the me generation, what I feel is right, and so on. When the whole world around us is into self-fulfillment, 
we are called to be into self-emptying. No wonder nobody wants that. <laughs> That's the cross. After Jesus had identified the new man with his life-giving teaching, he went even farther and in this, today's gospel declared that this man is his own body and blood. He said, I am that living bread. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses eternal life. It would be difficult to imagine a, a stronger or more explicit statement of the reality of the Eucharistic presence, the presence of Jesus, for the nourishment of his followers. It's all clearly stated in the gospel. So people ask, what then is this new uh, bread from heaven? Is it the teaching of Jesus as I basically explored? Or is it his body and blood as clearly stated in the gospel? Actually, it is both. And to separate them, or to set them one against the other would be to distort uh, this important message. Because to receive the body and blood of Christ without accepting his teaching and living by it would be to misunderstand completely the meaning of the Eucharist, the meaning of Jesus' presence in the Eucharist. For it's not a, a presence that gives, has some kind of magical power. There's no magic. You know, this was already a, a problem in St. John's community in the first century, and that's why this, he wrote this whole sixth chapter on the Bread of Life discourse. And he in, emphasizes the importance of living faith to counter this tendency that somehow the Eucharist is going to save us in spite of ourselves, you know? And Paul echoed the same concern. Imagine this was a problem way back, first century. When he told the Corinthians that the Eucharist would be fruitful only for those who receive it in the context of a life devoted to concern for others. So today we have the very heart of the teaching of Jesus and the deepest meaning of the bread of life. Well, what response does the Lord expect from us in return for this uh, gift of the Eucharist? Very simply, Jesus says, I give you my supper, I give you my sustenance, I give you my life, I give you me, I give you Eucharist. Now give Eucharist to others as I have given Eucharist to you. Remember after the Last Supper how Jesus washed the feet of his disciples? And he says, you must wash each other's feet. What I have done for you is to give you an example so you must follow. Give Eucharist to others, and this is how an unbelieving world will find faith and know that you are my disciples in your love, your reaching out, your concern, your respect, your reverence for one another. After all, we are all the body of Christ. So I prayed for you and for me, that somehow, with the grace of God, we could surrender our hearts to the faint hope that someday our daily commerce will match the fragile yet powerful vision of Jesus given to us in the Bread of Life uh, discourse. Not only for our own sake, but as a beacon of hope and a vision of possibility for a world teetering under fragmentation and suffering, deep division that practically dis disables us, deranges us. <laughs>